I'm Atuba Judge, and I welcome you to the month of February. Praise God. Hey, we are in February already. January is over. And listen, God has great, great plans for you for this month. Just as he's told us, he has great plans for us for 2023. Cheer up. Don't let anything put you down. Now, I'm excited about this month because the Lord has given us his word concerning this month. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. But before I do that, can we make a request for our daily bread? And now, listen, this is the beginning of a new month. So, release your faith as we make this demand. Join me right now and say, Father... I demand right now for my daily bread. Now, join me to say, throughout the month of February, I receive every daily bread. I will not miss anyone. In the name of the Lord Jesus, angels go and bring to me all that is for my good. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Trust me, a miracle is coming your way this month. Now I want to read something to you that the Lord has laid in my heart that I should share with you. Book of Psalms 127. as a popular scripture. Psalm 127 and verse 1. It says here, Unless the Lord builds the house, the labor, the labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. Now, what is the note of that? The Lord is saying, Allow me build for you. The Lord is saying, Allow me watch over you. Trying to watch over yourself, trying to be scared about what's going to happen will only become a journey of uselessness. Like he says, it will be in vain. Now, I know in our nation we are preparing for elections, but I want you to listen to me. If the Lord had not ordered that election, if the Lord had not commanded those who are running to run, they will be running in vain. The election process will just be in vain. Now, as children of God, our mind should be tuned to what the Lord is saying and doing. So you don't join to do that which is vain. Now, the Spirit of God has been made available to every one of us. You don't need any man to tell you what God is saying. You yourself can ask him by yourself. Praise God as a Lord. Really, what do you think? You know, sometimes I ask believers, have you personally asked the Lord what he thinks about our nation? What he thinks about who's going to be ruled next? Not just what you feel. Now, some people go as far as saying, the God is not interested in all those things. Who told you that? Read your Bible. Oh, that is in Bible days. Come on now. Praise God. Has God changed? He hasn't changed. And because he hasn't changed, his plan and his modus operandi then, as we read in scripture, is still the same today. Because we say he is the God who doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he cared about the children of Israel, then he will care about his children in Nigeria. Because that's his character. He is not God over Israel and less God over Nigeria. No, sir. Remember, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. That tells you that Nigeria belongs to him as much as Israel belongs to him. We know the story of Israel because of the people who walked with God. Abraham walked with God. But then also in our nation, we have people who are walking with God. So we are writing our own Bible, praise God. And the events of our nation will show that God truly is in charge of our nation. He has said, by strength shall no man prevail. Believe me, by strength, no man will prevail in this nation. No man will say he has prevailed by strength. 
for the Lord will go forth as an army and he will exalt his banner over us as a nation. Don't be afraid of war and news and, and, and rumors of war. Don't be afraid. But this is one thing that you must do. You must make sure that the Lord is watching over you. And, and, and don't just assume. Be certain that the Lord is watching over you. How can you be certain that the Lord is watching over you? First and foremost, you need to be sure that Jesus is your Lord. If he is not your Lord, how then do you know that he's watching over you? Oh, God is watching over everybody. Hey, listen. Listen. You can be sure that particularly you is watching over you. And that's one thing God wants you to know. That's why I say, except the Lord builds the house, they, they labor in vain who are trying to build. Except the Lord watches over the city. The government cannot watch over the city. They can't watch over you. Yes, the primary responsibility of government is one of it is security. But we know time has shown to us that we don't have a government who truly can secure the nation. The security of the nation has overwhelmed them so much that they don't know what to do. Presently, I feel sorry for our president because he looked like a helpless man. And that's why the scripture admonishes us that we should pray for people in authority. That the influence of God's spirit will rest upon them to do that which is right according to God's agenda. Listen. The, 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 the people God have ordained to rule this nation after this season. They are people who must carry out his agenda. And that's why as God's children, we don't think politics. We think the kingdom of heaven. And if the kingdom of heaven is interested in the kingdom of Nigeria, then we should align our minds to know what God has said and what God is saying. Get your PVC, yes. But beyond getting your PVC, carry the mind of God in your heart. Pray. Ask the Lord by yourself. This is not a time to do a bandwagon thing. This is a time for you to ask the Lord because the Lord is going to be working as individual, working with us as individuals. So you seek the Lord by yourself. Why can't you take out a day to fast and pray? You yourself. Not the one the church have called for. Not the one your pastor have called for. You as an individual. Say, Lord, I want to pray for this nation. Over here in our group, we've been praying every day for this nation. And we believe that God is going to carry out that which will please him in our nation. So we say, fear not. No matter what you hear, fear not. I read Psalm 91. Let's go to Psalm 91. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to hold this scripture to your heart. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Take note, it says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Now, where is the secret place of the Most High? It is not a place you choose by yourself. You are called to dwell in that place. You don't just find a place and say, This is the secret place of the Most High. No, sir. You are called to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. God calls you to it. How does he call you to it? First and foremost, like I told you, he calls his own children. So if you're not a child of God, you cannot say you're dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. But if you are a child of God, if you have answered the call of God all over your life, he calls you to be saved first and foremost because he loves you. He wants to give you life. Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it in abundance. That's the ministry of Jesus. That's what you ought to receive from him. He doesn't carry with him the ministry of death. Not at all. Death is not part of his ministry. Death is not part of what he has brought for us. He died so that we may live. See, he died for us that we may live. Now we are in the living season. This is not a season to die. This is not a season to get injured. This is not a season to get hurt. 
But then he first of all said, Anyone who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that one shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Almighty. This is how we keep ourselves safe. We dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. I was sharing with our brethren a few days ago, you know, many years ago, I was traveling between Abuja and Portacot. I was driving, that was actually the first time I was driving. And, and I think it was a day after one election in, in, in about 2007, yeah, 2007 election. A day after the election, I was on a trip and I got somewhere around Delta State. I ran into this mob of people and I had seen how they had vandalized the car. And now driving on that road, I ran into this mob and they surrounded the car and they were already with their axes, machetes, and, and, and things, all manner of weapons. And they were banging on the car and shouting, open this car, open this car. I had in the car two ladies and a young boy. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, everyone in this car is under my authority. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, I need your help. The car was already, some of, some of them were already on top of the car. Hit it, I said, they will break this car if you don't open and suddenly someone just shouted they are coming they are coming they are coming and everybody scampered for their lives they all ran away and the moment they cleared the way of course you should know what i would do praise god i zoomed off but then before i did i looked through the rearview mirror and i saw something like a convoy coming far behind me with siren i didn't hear the siren, but i saw the flashes of light and so i took off I drove for a few kilometers, you know, just push back. That whole area was just bush, you know, main road between, you know what I'm talking about. And then I drove to a place where there were houses and I got to this junction and I said to her, okay, let me wait so that, so that that convoy will come and then I'll follow them. I waited, I waited, I waited. Now I didn't get to any diversion or any side, any, no, no turning. It was a straight road to that junction. I waited and waited and I didn't see any convoy come. It's not, I stepped out of the car, looked down the road, I saw nothing. I said, so what happened? And then I realized the Lord sent his angels to deliver us in the midst of that mob. Now that's, who, that's what happens. Why? Because we were dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. We were dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty. It doesn't mean trouble will not come. But this is the truth. When trouble comes, he will be there to take charge and to take care of you. Now, that's our confidence. That's our confidence. So he says, I will say of the Lord, verse 2, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. This must be your confession this month. Now, he says, Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the from the Perilous pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers. Now I'm reading it, personalizing it, and that's exactly what you should do. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings I shall put my trust, or I shall take refuge. He is my truth. He shall be my shield and my buckler. He says, I shall not, as I'm saying it also to you, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Now hear what the Lord is saying to you. A thousand may fall on your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but they shall not come near you. Now you must believe God for that. No matter the noise you hear, they shall not come near you. Praise God. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is now look at, he said, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. It's not just a confession. He said, because we have made the Lord 
our dwelling place. Praise God. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For, I love this, for he shall give his angels charge over you. Hey, he has commanded the angels about me. He has commanded the angels about you. The angels are carrying a command with my name on it. Praise God. What is the command? To keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you or bless you. Dash your feet against a stone. You shall tread, you shall tread, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall trample on the foot. It doesn't matter what you see. Keep moving. That's what the Lord is saying. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because you have set because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. He's talking about you. A promise of deliverance. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is what the Lord is saying to you. And especially this month, the Lord is watching over you. So the Lord said, I should tell you, fear not, praise God. But you must be sure you are the one he is talking about. So if you are listening to me now and you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is the time. Quickly, quickly, join me right now as we make this, as we make this prayer. Say, Father, today, I submit my life over to you. Be the Lord of my life. Jesus, take charge of my life. You are Lord. And I declare because I believe that you are the one that God raised from the dead for me. I receive eternal life right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I pray for you right now. That whatever wind that is going to blow in this month, you will be found in safety. The eyes of the Lord is watching over you. He will keep you by himself. He will uphold you. He will keep you from any evil. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, after this shaking, the Lord will restore you and bring you to your own place in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise for what you are doing. Your loving arms is upon us and we will see your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. I love you so much. And we have a prayer meeting going on via Zoom. You can join. Get on the next watch. Praise God. Bye.